tomorrow I will upload in CMS. Maybe today or tomorrow I will upload in CMS. Okay, so what is the output we will get here? Can you please check whether the question is visible or not? Yes. So some students are giving the answer. So just you can see, when you are taking x equal to 20 and y equal to 10, that you will take the input here, input x comma y. Okay. So what is the value of x? x equal to 20 and y equal to 10. Then we are going to create one new variable and we are going to store 500 to the new variable. That is called the bonus. Okay. Now we are writing, if x greater than y, condition is true or false, 20 greater than 10, condition is true. If the condition is true, then we are going to update the value of bonus. We are going to update the value of bonus, bonus equal to bonus plus 100. Means 500 plus 100, you will get 600. And after that, we are printing the value bonus equal to 600. So here basically, you will get the output equal to 600. Same like that when we are going for the second value, then in this case, we will not execute this statement bonus equal to bonus plus 100. Means basically we are not updating the value of bonus directly. It will print the value of bonus. Means it will print 500 value. Okay. So this is a very simple question. What we are going to do? We are starting from the start point and we are going to the end point. Okay. Now in the previous class, we have already discussed about the maximum of three number. Okay maximum of three number how to find so we have written the two different logic the first one we are going to write if a greater than b if a greater than b then in this case definitely b is not a maximum so again we are going to write one more condition if a greater than c if a greater than c if a greater than c then in this case we will print print a otherwise we will print C. Otherwise, we will print C. Okay. Same like that. If this condition is false, yeah, this condition is false, false yeah. then in this case, again, if this condition is false, means definitely, if this condition is false, definitely B is not, if A is not a maximum value, which one your maximum value? Either B or C. So again, if we will write in the else part, we are going to write if this condition is false. Again, we have to check B greater than C. If this condition is true, maximum equal to B. Otherwise, maximum equal to C. Okay. Clear? So any doubt? Because in the previous class, we have already discussed about that. Now, second approach we have discussed about the logical and operator. So A greater than B, A greater than B, and A greater than C. If this condition is true, if both the conditions are true, means we are writing the logical and. If we are getting the true for this statement, Miss, what is the possibility of maximum? Anyone can you tell me what is the maximum value we get when this whole condition is true? When the whole expression is true, what is the maximum value we will get? We will get the maximum value equal to A. We will get the maximum value equal to A. Okay. So we have discussed about the two different approach. Now, third one approach. Today we are going to discuss about the third approach. Now assume that. Can we do like that? So first we will assume like that maximum equal to some negative number minus infinity okay or if you are working for the positive number only that you will consider maximum equal to zero or now assume that someone will assign you the task to find the maximum cgpa of three students okay so three students are there a b and c okay and someone will assign just will find what is the maximum cgpa in between the three S word A, B, C. Okay. So what is the procedure we are going to follow? Can we follow the procedure like that? First, we'll assume like that the maximum equal to zero because the CDP is always positive number. So we are going to consider maximum equal to zero. Initially, we are going to consider maximum equal to zero. 
Now we are asking the first student, just will come and tell me your CGPA. Now first student is saying like that, my CGPA is 9.5. What we will do, we will compare with our maximum value. Because this is a first value, so we will compare with the maximum value. Now here the value is greater than 0, so we will update this maximum value equal to 9.5. Means you are the maximum CGPA. You are the maximum CGPA. Now again, we will go for the second one. Again, we will ask to the B. Again, we will ask to the B. What is your CGPA? B is saying like that, my CGPA is 8.5. Now again, we will compare with the maximum CGPA. Now we can say, no, no, you are not the maximum CGPA. Okay. Now again, after that, the A is coming. Again, we are going to ask, what is your CGPA? A is saying like that, 9.7. Again, we will compare with the maximum CGPA. Now here we can say, no, no, you are whatever the student is sitting here, we will say, no, you are not the maximum CGPA. We got another maximum CGPA, that CGPA is 9.7. So here we will update the value 9.7. Miss, basically what we are going to do, one by one we are taking the number and then we are comparing with the previous number. Then we are comparing with the maximum value. Okay. Why we have taken maximum equal to zero anymore? Why we have taken maximum equal to zero? Okay, because we are working for the positive number. CGP is only positive number. So initially we assume like that the maximum equal to zero. Initially we assume like that whatever the value we are getting is this is a maximum equal to zero value we are getting. If we are working for the negative number, then in this case we will also consider maximum equal to minus infinity. Okay. So now you can see what we are going to do, how to draw the flowchart diagram, just you can see how to draw the flowchart diagram, okay. So first you can see, we are getting here a start, a start button. Then after that we are going to initialize maximum equal to zero. Okay, because we are working for the CGPA and we are only working for the positive number. We are not working for the negative number. We are only working for the positive number. Okay, now after that we are going to check how many students we are going to check. Three students we are going to check. How to count? Three students we need one counter. We need one counter that is used to count how many students we have already completed. We have completed two students, three students, four students, something like that. So again, we are going to take one more variable that is used to count how many students we have already completed. Okay. So we are writing here count equal to zero. Okay. So we are starting from zero. Yes. Till now, we have not completed any student. Now we are going to start. Then just to get see. We are going to write without our objective is to take three students. So we are going to write here if if c is smaller than 3, if c is smaller than 3, if c is smaller than 3, so if c is smaller than 3, then in this case means we have not completed our task because our task is to complete or compare the 3 CGPA or 3 students CGPA. If we are getting the C is smaller than 3, then in this case, we cannot read the value of C. We cannot reading the value of C. We are going to initialize the value of C equal to 0. Value of C equal to 0. After that, I will explain. Now, after that, we are asking the student to enter your CGPA or enter the value. We are asking the student to enter value. Okay. And that value we are going to store in simple CGPA variable. CGPA variable. Now again here we are going to compare the value. Yes, there is something problem with that. Start. Next one, we are going for one expression. We are writing Max means we are taking M, M equal to 0 and C equal to 0, okay, M equal to 0, C equal to 0. Next, we are going to check. Just you can see, first, first I am going to draw, after that we will ask a lot of questions. First we will see, first we will try to understand why we are using the C, okay, first we will try to understand. Okay, now we are going to write if c is smaller than 3, 3, then in this case we are going to read c 
CGPA. Okay. After that, we are getting one value CGPA. Now we are going to compare. If this condition is true, maximum equal to CGP. If this condition is false, we cannot do anything. Okay. Now, after that, something problem is coming maximum equal to cgp if this condition is false okay now you can see now you can see what we are going to do just you can see just you can see just you can see first we'll try to understand first you will try to understand after that you will ask question okay now, my objective is to compare the CGPA of three student. My objective is to compare the CGPA of three student. Okay. Three student. Okay. Now, we are going to compare the three student. How we can find how many students we have already completed. So, here basically we are using one variable counter. Counter means if you are getting counter equal to one, means you have already completed one student. If you are getting counter equal to two, we will already getting the two student. And here we will also increment the counter. So, we are going to write c equal to c plus one. c equal to c plus one. So, basically what we are going to do, first we are going to assume like that c equal to zero and maximum equal to zero. Okay. Now, someone will ask you, what is the status? How many students we have already completed? Now, we can see we have completed zero student and maximum we are getting zero. Means we have not completed any student. Maximum we have getting zero and we have completed zero student. That's why we are getting this one. Now, we will complete test, test this one. C is smaller than three. Condition is true or false? Condition is true because here C we are getting zero. C is smaller than three. Condition is true. Now we are asking the user to tell me your CGPA. Now user is saying 9.5. Okay. What is the value of CGPA? 9.5. Now we will check. CGPA is greater than M. Yes. Condition is true. Now we are making M equal to CGPA. What is the value of CGPA? 9.5. So here basically we are going to store 9.5. Clear? After that, we are going to increment c equal to c plus 1 means we are getting c equal to 1. Okay? Means we have completed the task for one student and we are getting the maximum CGPA equal to 9.5. But what is our objective? What is our requirement to complete the task for three students? You have to find the maximum between three students. Now again, we will check the counter whether we have completed the task or not. No, we have not completed the task because our C value is 1 and we will go up to 3. Okay. Now again, we will check C is smaller than 3, condition is 2. Again, we will ask the user to enter your CGP. We are asking the new user. Now, new user is giving 9.4. The new user is giving 9.4. Yeah, there is something problem with that. Again, I have to construct. First one is start. Again, I'm going to construct.
There is some tiny problem. Okay, now you can see. Now you can see. What we are going to do, we have already completed. Just you can see. What we are going to do, first we assume like that, maximum equal to 0 and counter equal to 0. What do you mean by that? We have not completed for any student because the counter equal to will counter basically, it will represent how many students we have already completed. Okay. So now we are getting c equal to 0 means we have not completed any student. That's why we are getting maximum equal to 0. Because the CGPA is always a positive number. So in the case of positive number, if we are going to find the minimum value, we will get the maximum equal to 0 means we will get the minimum 0 value in the case of positive number. Okay. Now you can see. After that, we are going for c is smaller than 3. Condition is true or false. First one, c is smaller than 3. First will tell me condition is true or false. Okay, condition is true or false. Anyone, C is smaller than 3. Just will write in the chat box. If C is smaller than 3, condition is true or false, condition is true. If the condition is true, now we are asking the user to enter the CGPA. We are asking the user to enter the value of CGPA. Now assume that the user has entered the value 9.5. Okay. Now what is the value of CG? CG equal to we are getting 9.5. Now we will compare CG greater than maximum. Condition is true or false? Condition is true. Then we are getting here M equal to 9.5. Just you can see. If the condition is true, we are writing M equal to CG. We are getting 9.5. And then we are writing counter equal to counter plus 1. We are writing 1. Means we have already completed the task for 1 student. Okay. So if you are going to find what is the maximum CGPA 9.5 only for 1 student. Again, we will come to this point. Just you can see after that, that, that there is direct path for this condition. So what we are going to check? We are again we are going to check C is smaller than 3. Condition is true or false because what is the value of C? C is 1. C is 1. Means condition is true. If the condition is true, again we are asking the user to enter the CGPA. Now the user has entered the value 9. So basically the 9 is stored here. Now again we are comparing with the maximum value. Maximum value, what is the maximum value? 9.5. What is the CG value? 9. Now we are going to check the condition. Condition is true or false? Condition is false. If the condition is false, we will not update the maximum value. We will only update the counter equal to 2. Okay. Now someone will ask you. Now we have completed 2 students. And what is the maximum CGPA? We are getting 9.5. Again, we are coming to this condition. C is smaller than 3. Condition is true or false? Condition is true. If the condition is true, again, we are asking the user 9.7. User is saying now the value is 9.7. Again, we will check. CGPA is greater than M? Yes, condition is true. Now we will update this value 9.7. Now we will update this value 9.7 and the counter become 3. Okay. Now again, we will come to this point. Condition is true or false? Anyone? Condition is true or false? Anyone? What is the condition is true or false? 3 is smaller than 3. Condition true or false? Condition is false. If the condition is false, what value we are going to print? We are printing the value 9.7. Can we say 9.7 is the maximum among 3 numbers? Can we say? Can we say the 9.7 is maximum among 3 numbers? 
Yes, definitely we can say. So here basically what we are going to do, we are using one iteration. We are using one loop. Every time we are taking one student CGPA yeah, and then we are comparing with our current maximum value. If we are getting maximum value which is smaller than the current CGPA, then we have to update the maximum value. Now assume that someone will ask you, the same program you have to write for 100 students. Out of 100 students, you have to find what is the, which students have the maximum CGPA or what is the maximum CGPA among 100 students. How to write? How to write? How to write? C is smaller than 100. Because we are starting from 0, so we can write C is smaller than 100. If you are writing C is smaller than 100, it will work for the 100 student. If you are writing C is smaller than 500, it will work for the 500 student. Because what procedure we are going to put? We are putting the simple procedure. We are going to continue the same procedure more than one time. If you are going to continue the same procedure one, more than one time, then we can use the concept called loop. We can use the concept called loop. Okay. So we can use the concept called loop. Okay. We can use the concept called loop. So this is a loop. Now I'm going to explain you why we are going to use the loop. Okay. Yeah, where you are asking? M equal to C if we C equal to C plus one. We are writing C equal to C plus one. Okay. So now you can see. Okay, now you can see. Now assume that someone will assign you the task to print bits one time. Okay, to print bits one time. How to write the program? How to write the program? Simple flowchart. How to write the flowchart? Simply we will write print bits one time. Same like that means simply what we will write? Simply we will write here a start. Then we will go for the print bits and after that we will write stop okay start and stop now assume that someone will ask you to print bits two times what we will do again we will write the printf statement that is feasible someone will ask you to bits three times again we will write one more printf statement that will print but someone will ask you to print bits 300 times then manually it is possible to write the 300 time printf statement just will tell me because we are doing the same time more than one time we are doing the same task we are doing the same task means we are always we are printing bits 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 means we are doing the same task more than one time then in this case we will suggest you to use some loop we will suggest you to use some iteration of some loop okay so there are three different ways to assign the loop but currently we will discuss the two different way and after that we will discuss about the loop at that time we will discuss about the all the three way okay so there are two different way first one is your for and second one is your why okay when we will use this statement when we are going to perform the similar task more than one time then we will use for loop or we will use while loop okay now, in the for loop, basically, we are writing the condition for c equal to 0, 2, 3. Okay. Or we can write c equal to 0, 2, 2. Means what will happen like that? Whatever the statement we are going to execute here, it will execute from c equal to 0, 2, 2. Just you can see, if we are writing something like that for c equal to 0, 2, 2. And here we are writing statement 1 statement 2. What will happen like that? Just you can see it. It will assume like that. Yes, you can see. If you are writing for c equal to 0 to 2, simple like that. If you are writing for c equal to 0 to 2, and after that you are writing some statement, statement 1, statement 2, okay? Then in this case, what will happen like that? It will execute from c equal to 0, 
c equal to 1 and c equal to 2 means every time it will add 1 to c when it will read c after that it will come out from this loop after that it will execute statement number 3 now you can see if you are going to find the equivalent flow chart diagram then you will get these types of flow chart diagram here you will also write c equal to c plus 1 you will get these types of flow chart and diagram what we are getting like that c equal to 0 if c is smaller than 3 if this condition is 2 it will execute this 2 a statement and after that it will increment the value of c and it will go up to 2 okay that's why we are writing 3 or you can here you can write c is smaller than equal to Two. So this is an equivalent flow chart diagram. Means if we are going to execute same like that. Now assume that we are going to print bits three hundred times. How to write for c equal to zero to two ninety nine? Or if we are going to write c equal to zero to three hundred, then it will go from the zero to three hundred. So now we are going to write c equal to one to three hundred. C equal to one to three hundred. Print f. Bits. Okay, printed bits. So in this case, what will happen like that? Automatically, it will increment C one by one. Means first it will change C equal to one, then it will go C equal to two, then it will go C equal to three, C equal to four. It will go up to C equal to three hundred. When the value of C become three zero one, automatically it will come out from the loop. Automatically, it will come out from the loop. Okay, so here basically we are not writing C equal to C plus one because automatically when we are writing C equal to one to three hundred means automatically it will change the C equal to one, two, three, four, five, something like that. If you are going to write for C equal to one to three hundred step plus two, try to understand. If you are writing normally c equal to 1 to 300, then it will go c equal to 1, c equal to 2, c equal to 3. It will go to 300 type. Okay. It will go to 300 type. This is the logic. This is the syntax. This is the syntax. This is the syntax. If you are writing c equal to 1 to 300, means basically we are going to assign one task to go from c equal to 1 to 300. Means automatically it will update the value of c equal to 1, 1, 1, 1. Means every time it will add 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, something like that. Okay. Now, if you are writing for c equal to 1 to 300, step plus 2, step plus 2, then I have already mentioned we are working for algorithm and flowchart. We are not working for C language. Try to understand. Aviseksa. We are working for algorithm. We are not working for C language. After algorithm, we will work for C language. Okay. So we are working for algorithm. We are not working for C language. Okay. Now, if you are writing a step plus 2 means, what will happen like that? First, it will take c equal to 1. The next value, it will take c equal to 1 plus 2. That is called the 3. c equal to 3 plus 2. That is called the 5. c equal to 5 plus 2. That is called the 7. Means it will update c by 2. If you are not writing anything here, then it will update c by 1. Automatically, it will update c by 1. But when you are writing a step plus 2, it will update 2 times. Then when we are writing a step plus 3, then C value will change like that. 1, 4, then it will go 7, then it will go 10, then it will go 13, something like that. When we are writing a step plus 5, then it will go like that. 1, 6, 11, 16, 21, something like that. When we are writing C plus 10, then in this case, what value it will change? 1, 11, 21, 31, 41, something like that. So basically, when we are write a step plus 1, automatically it will go by one time. A step plus 2, it will change the value of 2 times. Means every time it will update the value C by 2 times. Then if you are writing step plus 3, C equal to C plus 3 every time. A step plus 4, C equal to C plus 4, something like that. So either you will write this one. This is called the for loop. Or you can use some while loop. Okay. So in the while loop, basically, we are writing the condition the same like that. While c is smaller than 3, we will write the statement 1, a statement 2, and then we will update the value of c plus 1. Just to can see. So it will execute this all the statement until this condition is true. It will execute all the statement until this condition is true. Okay, so while c is smaller than 3, it will update all the statement until this condition is true. 
Okay. So as for example, if you are not going to write this statement, can you tell me how many times it will execute this statement one and two? If you are not going to write C equal to C plus one, then how many times it will execute the statement one and statement two? Anyone? It will execute infinity time. It will go to the infinity time. Okay, why? Because we are not updating the value of C. We are not updating the value of C. Okay, but if you are going to write the for loop, equivalent for loop, we will write C equal to 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Then we will write a statement 1 and a statement 2. Here, just you can see, here we are not writing, just carefully we will see, here we are not writing this update statement. Automatically, that is present in the syntax of the for loop. Automatically, it will change one by one. First, it will take c equal to 1, then it will go c equal to 2, then it will go c equal to 3, something like that. When you are using the for loop, okay. Same like that, if you are writing here, step plus. Okay, and here if you are going for c equal to 1 to 10, and here we are writing a, a step plus 2. Can you modify the same way the while loop? What we will write here? We will write c equal to c plus 2. This is similar to this for loop. Both are same. Because here we are also writing here we will make c equal to 1, and we are also writing c equal to c plus 2, and here we are also writing a step plus 2. So when we are writing a step plus 2, we will go two times. Okay, so as for example, now I do that. Someone will ask you, simple question, someone will ask you to find the summation of only even number from 0 to 100. Someone will ask you to find the summation of only even number from 0 to 100. A step means basically we are giving the step. How many times it will increment the value of C? Okay, so when we are writing no step, it will increment C c equal to 0. When we are writing c plus 2, c equal to c plus 2 means we are writing a step plus 2. A step 2 no, not. We are writing a step plus 2. Okay. As for example, just you can see one question. Now we are getting one requirement like that. You have to find summation of all even number from 0 to 100. Summation of all any even number from 0 to 100. Okay, if you are not writing a step, then in this case, automatically it will increment C by 1. Automatically it will increment C by 1 when you are not writing any step. Okay, when you are writing a step plus 2, it will increment C by C plus 2. Okay, so how to write? Just you can see how to write for, for C equal to 0 to 100 because after that we are getting 0 to 4, 6, 8, 10, something like that. So here we will write step plus 2. Miss automatically first the value of c equal to 0, then it will go to 2, then it will go to 4, then it will go to 6, 8, 10. Automatically it will go up to 100. Okay. Then we will write sum equal to sum plus c and initialize the value of sum equal to 0. Now you can see we are going to write something like that. Just you can see. So in this case, if you are going to write C equal to 0 to 100, it will go up to 100. 100 is also considered as a true statement. 100 is also considered as a true statement. True statement. Okay. So what we are writing for C equal to 0 to 100, step plus 2. Step plus 2 means if you are not writing step plus 2, then in this case, what is the output you will get? Anyone can you tell me what is the output you will get? For c equal to 0 to 100, sum equal to sum plus c. Can you tell me what is the output you will get? What, what is the output you will get? Anyone? Sum of 100 number. You will get the output like that. 0, 1, plus 2, plus 3, something like that. Okay. Now, if you are writing here step plus 3. Can you tell me what is the output you will get? A step plus 3. A step plus 3. What is the output you will get? Anyone. Can you tell me what is the output you will get? Anyone. It will go from 0, then 3, then 6, then 9, then 12, up to 99. Up to 99. Okay. Why? Because we have written here a step plus 3. We have written here a step plus 3. Now, 
in the same program how to write by using the while loop how to write the same algorithm using the while loop anyone how to write first you write while loop c equal to 0 sum equal to 0 while c is smaller than 100 while c is smaller than 100 sum equal to sum plus c c equal to c plus 3 this one just you can see this is the equivalent code of this for loop this is the equivalent code of this for loop if you are writing for loop directly here we are going to initialize the value c equal to 0 it will go up for the c equal to 0 to 100 and every time it will increment the step by 3 every time it will increment the step by 3 okay now same like that just you can see just you can see where we will write c equal to 0 where you are asking me. Okay. Now, second question. I am giving one question. Now, your task is to find all the factor. In while loop, we cannot write. In the while loop, we cannot write C equal to 0. In the while loop, we cannot write C. Here, we always write the condition. While loop means it will execute all the statement until this condition is true. This, these are the predefined syntax are there. And we will always use these types of syntax. Okay. So when we are writing y c is smaller than 3 is 100, means it will execute all the statement inside this braces, inside this braces until this condition is true. Until this condition is true. Okay. Now I am giving one task to print all factor of any number n. You will print all factor of any number n. Can you tell me what is the factor of 10? Anyone? Can you tell me what is the factor of 10? What is the factor of 10? We will get 1. Then we will get 2. Then we will get 5. 1 to 5. If you are going for 10, that is also possible. Okay. So 10 means number is already factor. So now I think that we are only going to print 1 to 5. We are only going to print 1 to 5 or we are going to print 1 to 5 10. We are going to print 1 to 5 10. How to write the program? We are asking the user how to draw the algorithm. We are asking the user to enter the value of n. And after that, based on the value of n, we are going to print all the factor of n. Anyone can you tell me how to print this value? Anyone? First one, you can use the while loop and second one, you can use the for loop. First one, you can use the while loop and second one, you can use the for loop. Okay. So, how to write? If you are going for the while loop, then we will make counter equal to 0. And then we will write while c is smaller than n. While c is smaller than n. If this condition is true, now we have to check if... We are going to start from 1 because we are fighting the factor from 1. If, if, just you can see, if n modular division c double equal to 0, if n modular division c double equal to 0, can we say c is a factor of n? If n modular division c double equal to 0, can we say the c is a factor of n? Can we say? Definitely we can see. Now, what we can do here, we will going to print the value. Print C. Print C. Okay. After that, if this condition is not true, then we will go for the second value C equal to C plus 1. Then we will go for the second value C equal to C plus 1. Just we will check whether our flowchart is working or whether our algorithm is working or not. Just you can see. So if you are going to write 10, then what is the value of n? n becomes 10. What is the value of c? c equal to 1. So here we are getting c equal to 1 and n we are getting 10. Now check the condition. n modular division c. What is the value we will get? 10 modular division 1. You will get 0. Condition is true. We are printing 1. Now after that c becomes 2. 10 modular division 2. Condition is 2. 2. Now the c becomes 3. Again, we are going to n modular division c. Condition is false. Now again, the c become 4. Condition is false. c become 5. Condition is true. Condition is true. Then we are getting here the value equal to 5. Now again, we will go for the 6, 7. Condition is false. When we are getting 10, condition is true. Then in this case, we are, yes, we will write c is smaller than equal to n. It will print the value 1 to 5. 10. It will print the value 1 to 5. 
statement. Okay. Now the same statement can you write by using the form? Can we write by using the form loop? Anyone can we write by the same statement using the for loop? No. How to write? Anyone? How to write? Using the for loop. How to write? Just you can see for c equal to one to n if c mod n modular division c double equal to zero print f c completed just you can see just you can see for c equal to one to n if n modular division c double equal to zero print f c print f c directly will print the value print f c clear so any doubt here any doubt any doubt here any doubt? Any doubt? Okay, no any doubt. Now we'll go for the same question. Now I do that if you are working for the factor of 16. Can you tell me what are the factor of 16? Yes, you can use C++. C++, that we will discuss after operator discussion. Then you can use C++. Okay, then you can use C++. Okay, so now assume that some students are saying 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Okay, now assume that can we say if A is a factor of N, if A is a factor of N, try to understand what I am saying like that. If A is a factor of N, then N divided by A is also a factor of N. Can we say if 1 is a factor of 16, then 16 divided by 1 is also a factor of 16. Can we say? Can we say? Means if we are getting 1 is a factor, definitely we can find the other factor that is also 16. If 2 is a factor, then 8 is also a factor. If 4 is a factor, then 4 is also a factor. 8 is a factor, 2 is a factor, and 16 is a factor, 1 is a factor. Just you can see. After this step, can we get any new factor? Just you can see. After this process, are we get any new factor? Just you can see. Can we get any new factor after 4? Because after 4, you are getting 8. That you have already forged. After 4, 4 you are getting 2. That is already forged. After 4, you are getting 16. That is already forged. That is already forged. So can we write here, instead of taking here, why C is smaller than root n? Can we write here a square root of n? And here we will print print C and n divided by C. Can we write? Can we write why C is smaller than or equal to a square root of n? If n modular we are C double equal to zero, then we will print C and n divided by C. Can we print this value? Can we print? Okay, so what we are going to do if you are working for the flowchart diagram, what we are going to do, just you can see. First, we are going for start. Then we are going to read. Read in. Then we are writing here c equal to 1. Then we are writing here condition if c is smaller than equal to a square root of n. If this condition is true, if this condition is true, then again we are going to check one more condition. Again we are going to check one more condition. N modular division C. N modular division C. Okay. Equal to 0. Okay. Equal to 0. If this condition is true, if this condition is true, then we are going to write print. Print C N divided by C. Okay. After that, we are going to write c equal to c plus 1. And here we are going to write here. If this condition is false, we will come to this place. And after that, directly we are coming to this one. Okay. And then if this condition is false, then directly we are going for stop. Just can you please check what I am going to do here. First, we are reading the value. Just you can see. First, we are reading the value. Now, we assume that the value equal to 10. Now we are writing c equal to 1. What is the value of c? c equal to 1 and n equal to 10. Then we are writing c is smaller than equal to a square root of 10. What is the value of a square root of 10? It will come 3 point something. It will come 3 point something. Now assume that we are going to write 3.3. 3.3. Okay. Now we are going to check. What is the first value? c equal to 1. n modular division c. Condition is true or false. 
tan modulo division 1 you will get zero or not condition is true if the condition is true it will print the value 1 and n divided by c it will print the value 10 1 and 10 now it will increment the c equal to 2 condition is true true is smaller than 3.3 condition is true again we will check condition is also true it will print 2 comma 5 now c equal to 3 then this condition is true or false tan modular division 3 what is the value we will get 1 1 is not equal to 0 so we will get false so c equal to c plus 1 we are getting c equal to 4 now condition you will check c is smaller than 3.3 condition is false it will come out from the loop it will come out from the clear now if your concept is clear then you will write one algorithm to check whether the number n is prime or not whether the number a is prime or not yes in this case it will repeat so if you are going to check again more condition that here you can write if a c double equal to n c then in this case directly we will print one value here you can write simple condition if c double equal to n c then we will print one value Okay, now next you will write one algorithm, at least you will try, you will write one algorithm that is used to check whether the entered number is prime or not. Prime number means you are not getting any factor except one and itself, okay. So if you are going to check any number is prime or not, then you will check from 2 to n minus 1 and if you are not getting any factor between 2 to n minus 1 then in this case we can say the number is prime or if you are getting exactly two factor between 1 to n then you can also say the number is prime okay so now can you write one algorithm that is used to check whether the number is prime or not anyone Can you write anyone? How to write? A square root of n, if you are checking, that is also fine. Mm -hmm. What we can do? We can check from 2 to a square root of n, and if you are getting any factor, then we can say the number is not prime. If you are getting any factor, then we can check the number is not prime. So can we write like that just to see? We are going to check number of factor equal to 0. Initially, we are going to slide number of factor equal to 0. And then we are writing for C or you can write I. For I equal to 2 to a square root of A. For I equal to 2 to a square root of A. If n modular division i if n modular division i double equal to 0 then we will write number of factor equal to number of factor plus 1 okay number of factor equal to number of factor plus 1 okay after that we are going to check if number of factor double equal to 0 means printf number is prime okay else no, printf number is not prime can be right what we are going to do, first we are finding how many factors are there between 2 to a square root of n. Because we have already checked after a square root of n, you are not getting any new factor. After a square root of n, you are not getting any new factor. You are not getting any new factor. Okay. Means we are going from 2 to a square root of n. And if you are getting any factor between 2 to a square root of n, means we can say this number is not not a prime number okay now assume that we are going to check 10 is prime number or not how to check can you find what is the value of number of factor anyone can you find what is the value of number of factor can you tell me what is the number of factor for this one i am talking about this algorithm i am talking about this algorithm in this case can you tell me what is the value of nof what is the value of nof in this again you are doing the mistake what is the value of n o f in this algorithm i equal to 2 okay 10 modular division 2 condition is 2 what is the value of n o f n o f become 1 now i equal to 3 condition is false just you can see how many students are saying 2 that is completely wrong answer just you can see we are going from 
टू टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एयर मीन वी आर गोइंग फ्रॉम टू टू थ्री पॉइंट थ्री टू टू थ्री पॉइंट थ्री जस्ट यू कैन सी टू टू थ्री पॉइंट थ्री फर्स्ट वन एन मॉडल डिविजन आई डबल इक्वल टू जीरो कंडीशन इज ट्रू और फॉर्स फर्स्ट वट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ आई टू कंडीशन इज ट्रू और फॉर्स कंडीशन इज ट्रू If the condition is true, then the number of factor become number of factor plus one. You are getting one. What is the value of now? I become three. Three is smaller than three point three. Condition is true. Now, can we get n modular division three double equal to zero? Can we get n modular division three double equal to zero? Condition is true or false? Anyone? Condition is true or false? Condition is false. So in this case, it will not be true. Now the value become four. In this case, if we are getting four, it will come out from the For loop. Now we are going to check if number of factor. What is the value of number of factor? One. We are getting one. If the number of factor double equal to zero, condition is true or false? Condition is false. If the condition is false, then we can say n is not a prime number. Then we can say n is not a prime number. Now, now your task is to write one algorithm to print all the prime number between one and two. A user will enter in, and you have to. Sir, you are muted. How to write? How to write? My question is: Your task is to print all the prime number between. One two n. Some experts are creating the problem that I will check. Okay, so they are forcefully muting me so that I will check. Okay, and based on that, you you are ready to accept the exam. how to print anyone how to print how to use this code anyone how to use this code how to use this code now assume that whatever the user had enter we are going to store in if so now we assume that we are going to store as per example user has enter 100 we are going to store in 100 means our objective is to print all the prime number between 1 to 100 can we write in the same thing can we write for n equal to 1 to 100 and we inside this loop we will write the same thing can we write just you can see i have written only one line and this program will work for to print all the prime number between 1 to 100 can you please check what we are going to do we are changing the value of n equal to 1 to 100 means here it will check for i equal to 2 to the square root of n means for every value of n we are going to exclude this statement and we have already written this program this program is used to check whether n is a prime number or not now here we are changing the value of 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 something like that we are changing up to we are changing up to 100 now can we say this program will work to find all the prime number between 1 to 100 can we say this program will work to print all the prime number between 1 to 100 can we write okay so now for the next class i am giving some assignment i am going to post in the assignment this assignment just you will try to write the algorithm and flow chart diagram you will try to write algorithm and flow chart diagram for this all the assignments clear so in the next class we will check you have to complete this all eight assignment okay So you have to draw the flow chart as well as you will write the algorithm. Yes. So maybe the Sunday you will get one extra class. Sunday and Monday you will get one extra class. Okay. So that I will inform you through mail. Okay. Regarding the time, I will inform you through mail. No. Today you have no any extra class. Today you have no any extra class. Your extra class is on Sunday and Monday. 
manually i will check you have to complete during the lectures hour i will ask any one of the student to share your screen and based on that i will check whether you have completed your assignment or not there is no need to submit your assignment you will prepare from your side manually i will ask for means randomly i will ask for the 10 or 20 student to show me your assignment and in this case at least you should complete all the eight assignment you will write the same like that you will write in the a4 sheet you will draw this flow chart in a4 sheet or word document that i have already put it in the chat box i have already put it in the chat box yeah you can leave there is no need to upload your assignment listen everyone there is no need to upload your assignment in the next class randomly i will ask 10 or 15 student to show me your assignment okay so randomly i will check whether you have completed or not if if condition is false where you are talking about just you can see if this condition is false then in this case it will print a is not a prime number if this condition is true then it will print a is a prime number no it will not evaluate i have posted in chat box again i am going to post it 